What's up gangsters, welcome back to the channel. If you're new here, I'm Jad, and this is the only corner of the internet where we look at the bleeding edge of science and ask, is this going to save us, or is it just a very expensive way to build Skynet? Grab your beverage of choice, coffee, whiskey, or the nutrient paste the tech giants want us all eating by 2030, and let's get into it. It is Monday, December 1st, 2025 and let me tell you the last eight days absolutely bonkers we are seeing a convergence my friends a tightening of the noose around the neck of impossibility we have google and microsoft playing 4d chess with atoms we have ai sniffing out ghosts in rocks older than the continents and we have physicists finally admitting that biology is just physics wearing a funny hat so let's peel back the curtain and see who's pulling the strings shall we part one the quantum space-time dance First up, let's talk about the big boys, the quantum arms race. Now, usually when Google announces something, I check my wallet and my privacy settings. But this week, the team at Google Quantum AI dropped a bombshell that is actually stunning. They've demonstrated a dynamic surface code implementation. Now pause. I know dynamic surface code sounds like something a Star Trek engineer shouts before the ship explodes, but here's the pattern you need to see. Until now, error correction in quantum computers was rigid. You had your qubits, your quantum bits, sitting in a grid, terrified of the slightest noise, and you had to lock them down. What Google has done, effectively, is teach these qubits to dance. They implemented this on a hexagonal lattice, using three distinct quantum processors, and they made the code war. They are swapping the roles of data qubits and measurement qubits on the fly. It's a dynamic breathing system. Why does this matter? Because static systems break, dynamic systems adapt. By moving the code around, they are dodging errors in real time, reducing the connectivity needed from four neighbors to three. It's a cleaner, smarter way to build the fabric of reality inside a freezer. They aren't just calculating, they are weaving a fault-tolerant blanket out of pure math but, never to be outdone, Microsoft and Quantinuum have kicked the door down as well. They just announced the successful entanglement of 12 logical qubits. Now, don't roll your eyes. 12? My toaster has more bits than that. Ah, uh, but these are logical qubits. These are the Navy SEALs of qubits. They are built from a swarm of 56 physical qubits. Noisy, chaotic physical ions and error corrected into 12 perfect noise-suppressed logical units. And they didn't just make them, they used them. They ran a simulation of a chemical catalyst, specifically an iron-based one used for things like nitrogen fixation. This is the holy grail, gangsters. If we can simulate catalysts perfectly, we unlock cheap fertilizer, carbon capture, maybe even new fuels. And they did it with error rates below the threshold needed for practical application. Do you see the string here? Google is rewriting the geometry of the machine, the dynamic codes, and Microsoft is brute forcing the reliability, the logical qubits. We are moving from isn't quantum physics weird to let's use quantum physics to engineer molecules. The era of toy quantum computers is over. The era of the simulation is beginning. Part two the machine nervous system. Now let's bring it from the subatomic to the macro, the robots. In 10 days, the RIAC 2025 conference kicks off. Robotics, intelligent automation and control technologies. You might think, oh, more factory arms welding cars. No, look deeper. The focus this year is adaptive control and industry 4.0. What we are seeing, and this links back to the quantum stuff, is the death of the dumb robot. We are putting sophisticated sensors and AI models into the machines that build our world. We aren't just programming them, we are giving them a nervous system. There's a paper from the Motion Control and Power Solutions Conference that caught my eye. They're talking about industrial IoT and RPA, robotic process automation, merging. We are building a feedback loop where the factory knows it's making a mistake before the mistake happens. It's cybernetics, pure and simple. The feedback loop between the digital brain and the physical hand is closing. And when you 
combine that with the AI advances we're seeing, you don't just get a better toaster. You, know, you get a manufacturing base that can optimize itself without human intervention, which is great for efficiency and terrifying for anyone who likes having a job. But hey, at least the robots will be polite, hopefully. Part three, the ghost in the rock. Now this, this is my favorite story of the week. This is where the absurdity of our tech meets the profundity of our existence. A paper just dropped in Nature. Researchers trained an AI, specifically a random forest model, which is just a fancy way of saying a decision tree on steroids, to analyze the chemical composition of rocks. But not just any rocks, 3.3 billion year old rocks. Here's the rub. When you look for life that old, you don't find bones, you don't find shells, you don't even find cells, really. They've been crushed, cooked, and pressurized by the Earth's crust for three eons. All that's left is a chemical smear, a smudge. But the AI? The AI can smell the smudge. They fed it pyrolysis GCMS data. Basically, they cooked the rock and sniffed the smoke. And the AI found chemical fingerprints of biological activity. It detected signs of life 3.3 billion years ago, and get this, signs of oxygen producing photosynthesis 800 million years earlier than we thought possible. Let that sink in. We are using a silicon brain born in 2025 to look at a rock from the dawn of time, and it is seeing the ghosts of our ancestors. It's detecting the pattern of life where a human would just see dirt. And the kicker? This is the same tech we are going to strap to a rover and send to Mars. We aren't looking for little green men anymore. We are looking for the chemical echo of a microbe that died 4 billion years ago. We are outsourcing the discovery of aliens to the algorithms. If that doesn't make you feel like we're living in a sci-fi novel, I don't know what will. Part 4. The Physics of the Brain Finally, let's talk about the hardware inside your own skull. For decades, neuroscientists have treated the brain like a wet computer. Neuron fires, signal goes down the wire, release chemical, repeat. A system of switches. But physicists at UTSA, University of Texas at San Antonio, just published something that throws a wrench in that simple model. They've been looking at the cytoskeleton inside the neurons, specifically the microtubules. Now, if you follow the fringe, you know Penrose and Hameroff have been shouting about microtubules for years. But this is hard data. The UTSA team found that these structures aren't just scaffolding. They are conducting electrical oscillations. They found frequencies around 39 hertz inside the cell structure itself. Why does this matter? Because 39 hertz is right in the gamma wave range. The frequency associated with high-level cognitive functioning, binding and consciousness. They are bridging the gap between physics and biology. They're showing that the neuron isn't just a switch, it's a resonator. It's a symphonic chamber. This suggests that the computation in your brain isn't just happening at the synapse. It's happening inside the geometry of the cell, potentially at a quantum or near-quantum level. This links back to our first story. Google is building dynamic surface codes to make quantum computers work. Nature might have already done it inside your head three billion years ago. The string connects, my friends. We are just trying to reverse engineer what the universe built for free. So what do we have this week? Quantum computers are moving from static to dynamic, learning to dance to avoid errors. AI is becoming a time-traveling detective, sniffing out life in the deep past. Robots are gaining nervous systems. Neuroscience is realizing the brain is more like a quantum orchestra than a telephone switchboard. The string running through all of this information, whether it's encoded in a qubit, a rock, or a microtubule, we are finally building the tools to read the code of reality. The tech giants, Google, Microsoft, they want to own the reader. They want to patent the lens, but the science, the science belongs to us and it is revealing a universe that is far more interconnected, vibrant and intelligent than we ever gave it credit for. Stay skeptical of the corporate press releases, but stay excited for the discovery, because we are standing on the precipice of understanding everything. All right, that's it for this week's download. 
If you enjoyed this deep dive, do the algorithmic ritual. Smash the like button until it regrets its life choices. Subscribe if you want to stay ahead of the curve and share this with a friend who thinks Quantum Surface Code is a skincare regimen. And remember, you are a collection of 3.3 billion year old biological code running on a quantum resonant neural network currently staring at a glowing rectangle. You're practically a god. Try to act like one today. Catch you on the flip side, gangsters. Jarred out.